what's up? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Listen, I am so exhausted. But I said, in order for me to grow my YouTube channel, I got to post more content. Because as I'm researching, the algorithms on YouTube is based off of how often you post how many interactions you have with your subscribers. Y'all listen, I need everybody who take the time to look at my YouTube videos. Can you please share my information? I'm not on Facebook. I got off of Facebook a long time ago. Um, I hardly ever, ever post on Instagram. I do have a Twitter for my business. But anyway, this your girl Priscilla. For those of you who haven't been to the channel, if you are new, this is Priscilla. And normally, normally I have a great introduction, but I am so exhausted, y'all. But I just wanted to come on and do my usual, my vegetable tacos with no meat. I am a pescatarian. I normally eat meat twice a week. I'm going to need some pointers, y'all, on how to incorporate my meat into my meals because I've dang near eliminated all meats. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to um, go ahead and get my prayer and then we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this food, Lord. Lord, I thank you and I just ask that you please watch over my family, my brothers, my children, my grandchildren, my family, near and far, Lord. Lord, I pray that you take all impurities out of all of these ingredients in this food. In your son, Jesus, sweet and precious name, I pray. Amen. Y'all, I do not drink alcohol. This is a virgin bloody Mary. Thank God, knock on wood. I have been alcohol free since September the 16th of 2020. Listen, I am living for the better. I am no longer eating meat. I no longer drink alcohol. I don't want to do nothing that's going to, you know, make my body um, do crazy things. And as y'all can see, look at all of that sour cream piled on top of my tacos. Listen, I was at the end of the barrel. <laughs> you know how we are. We got to get every drop. So I just squeeze, 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 squeeze all the uh, sour cream until it was gone. So this video will be short, y'all. Um, I don't really have a whole lot to talk about, but I do have something to talk about. And it's a very sensitive subject to me, um, I guess, because I've just been through so much over the years, you know, and it's like, Lord, when is it going to end? It's like one bad dream after the next. And it's like, my thing is, I'm a firm believer that, um, what I'm trying to say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy always come in the morning. I know it's coming. I do. I know joy is coming. But sometimes we get discouraged. You know what I mean? Um, I'm going to tell y'all something a little bit later in the video, right before I end, because I don't like to get emotional. But anyway, uh, let me take my first bite. Let me see if I can get a thumbnail. Okay. Mmm. Mm -mm. People may not believe this, but these vegetable tacos taste just as good as the ones with the meat. I mean, it got the same seasoning, same ingredients. The only thing missing is the meat. This is my first time eating all day, too. I think earlier today I ate some Roman noodles. And I'm going to tell you what I learned about those. We really shouldn't eat Roman noodles. You know the little R-A-M-E-N noodles in the pack? 
they put a camera in somebody's stomach. This is the kind of camera that you can digest, that you swallow. It went into the person's stomach. Listen, no lie. It took 48 hours for those noodles to digest out of that person's body. That's a long time for noodles to be inside your body. You feel me? I know you do. Mm. Mm -mm. These tacos got fresh lettuce that I chopped up, fresh tomatoes that I chopped, salsa, chunky medium, shredded for Mexican four cheese and sour cream. That's it. It is so good. Mm. I so said, I hope I don't have heartburn. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't like talking with food in my mouth right there. Um, between this Bloody Mary and these tacos with this tomatoes and salsa, that's a, a triple whammy. Mm. What y'all got going on out there? Now that they trying to send everybody back to work. What y'all doing with yourselves before you go back into the buildings and clean yourself out in harm's way just to make somebody else money on, on their business? <laughs> I just can't say that enough. We got to stop going to work for other people. I don't care. Listen, I, my husband would tell you, I spend at least 17 hours out of my day. If I'm up, let's say I'm up, I get up at seven o'clock and I don't go to bed. It's about 12 at night. I am constantly researching ways to make passive income so I can get off of the job I'm on. The job I'm on, it is a government job, federal government job, pay very well, but listen, I am my own boss. I got two online stores. I sell in person as well. Ain't no way I can see myself a year from now still working for somebody else. I just can't do it. I can't. Especially once you have owned your own business, it is so hard to go backwards. It's like I've already had a brick and mortar. I've already started from the bottom. Now we're here. It's almost impossible for me no it's impossible for me to go backwards i just cannot do that like people be like i'm just gonna give up on selling my own stuff and and running my own store i'm just gonna i'm just gonna stay on this job save money i'm gonna retire and then i'm just gonna me and my children and my family just gonna travel a lot of people dying before that happens you feel me so stop Stop doing that. Like they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. A lot of y'all may look at my videos and think, that girl is always serious. No, I promise you, I am one of the funniest people on this side of heaven. You can ask any of my family. My cousin Tasha, she watched these videos. She can leave a comment in the section below. I am a funny person. Kevin Hart ain't got nothing on me. Chris Rock ain't got nothing on me. Chris Tucker running neck and neck. But I'm going to tell you something. I am a genuine comedian. But right now, where I'm at in my life, all the things that has transpired, I laugh when I have to. But I'm going to tell you, it's things that has happened in my life. Whew. Well, I'm, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission for God, number one and foremost. Number two, I'm on a mission to make sure my husband and my children and my grandchildren are straight. And then all my, you know, extended family and all my immediate family, they know who they are. And then far, I am doing everything I can. And I'm not going to rest until they lay me in front of that church and say, this is it. I'm going to tell everybody about God everywhere I go. I'm going to do everything I can to help my children succeed in life. And I'm talking about the legal way. 
I'm going to make sure that we have everything that we need and desire on this side of heaven. Because why live in misery and hell and then die and go to hell? So we're going to live good here on earth and then we're going to die and we're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And if you are under the sound of my voice, and you say, what must I do to be saved? All you got to do is believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Repent and turn from your wicked ways and sin no more. And even if you sin, make sure you repent daily for sins that you committed knowingly and sins that you committed unknowingly because y'all if you look at the list of sins i got them if anybody want them i email it to you if you look at the list of sins that you can commit against god <clears throat> i don't see how none of us gonna make it happen the bible says even the righteous will scarcely make it in and for everybody who want to be rich I don't want to be filthy rich. I just want to be well off so I can pay my bills and, and provide for my family. It says the rich man, chances of inheriting the kingdom of heaven is like a camel going through the eye of a needle, of a needle. Can you imagine a camel with the big camel back going through the eye of a needle? I promise y'all, y'all just bear with me. I got some comedy coming for y'all. I promise y'all do. Tasha, this for you. Because I already know you probably said, drink the drink the um blood and mare. Drink the blood and mare. And eat the rest of that taco. So I'm going to do this for my cousin Tasha. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That was good. I already know my cousin. <laughs> She'll leave it in the comments down below. <laughs> mm. That Bloody Mary right there might have a little bit too much salt. Again, I do not drink alcohol. This is a virgin. And I don't have to keep explaining it because God know all things. Woo! Let me get some of this lip, this lime. It'll be so good with that lime. Y'all, this one right here got a lot of sour cream. Y'all see it? Mm-hmm. Sour cream all at the bottom. I was just gone then, y'all. I was thinking about my brother. <laughs> That's what I was going to tell y'all. Earlier today, I got a text from one of my brothers. Um, two of them are in Alabama, and one is here with me in, in Orange Park. But he was at work, and he was working, and he said that he was working hard. So I was like, take it easy now. You know, you can't be overworking because... My brother got sarco, sarco, sarcoidosis that Bernie Mac died from. And he done had several close calls where he liked to die. So today, I get a message saying that since the boss man rushing me to the hospital, uh, my heart is stopping. 
So I started praying on the text message. Ten minutes later, little text message, probably five minutes later, talking about is this race sister? Um, we trying to bring him back now. What? Don't play on my phone. Cause see, I don't I don't play games like that. Now, if you run a game and you playing, that's the wrong way to play right now. But if it's serious and for real, why you won't answer the phone when I call? If my brother is collapsing and, and he's dying, so y'all say, why y'all won't answer the phone? So I called the hospital, and the one hospital, because I don't know which one he was at. And I'm like, um, is my brother there? And they was like, um, no, you know, acting all stank. That's another thing. These old hospitals, now that this COVID mess done happened, they don't want to have give you information on your family members and stuff. And I'm like, ma'am, I'm not asking you to give me any of his medical records information. I know everything about my brother. I probably know more than you. I just need you to write my name down. So if he come in, they say he unresponsive. Y'all need to have a next of kin to contact, right? That lady put me on hold about 10 minutes and come back. What's his name again? I pray that you don't have any family members in a hospital and they treat you like that when you call to check on them. I'm way in Florida. My brother way in Alabama. Man. That's what I say. I ain't really got a lot to talk about. But I will say this. Trouble don't last always. No matter what you going through, no matter what it look like, no matter what it feel like, just always know that God got something in store for you. And it's like, I want to sing just a little bit of this song, but every time you sing something, they want to try to monetize, take your, um, do copyright claims. I ain't even famous yet. And they already striking copyright strikes, but they don't count against me, but still. I be want to sing. Don't worry, though. We got three songs already ready, and they are ours. Once we go in the studio and lay them down, it's a done deal. We'll have the copyright claim for them. Better believe it. And you best believe they're going to be hit songs. Mm-hmm. Sure is. Mm. Mm. But y'all be praying that I get good news on my brother. Man, me and that boy go way back, man. He look like my twin. Praying that he pulled through. Even if God don't send him back, I know God is able. And if he don't send him back, that means his will has been done, and my brother's time is up on this earth. I tell people all the time, when I die, don't cry for me, man. Let me go on and be with God and start my life over again. It's just so much. It's one thing after the next, after the next, after the next. I'm just over it. Anyway, y'all, I think I'm going to go ahead and get off the video. But before I go, just to lighten up the load, lighten up the load, I'm going to tell y'all a joke. I love telling jokes. There was a king. He had a daughter. And he said, whoever... 
he told a white man, a Mexican man, and a black man, three of them, they was out on a journey. They came across the king's land, and the king had a big old lake, and it was full of alligators. So the king said, come here, my friends, come here. So they go over to the king. They all amazed that the king has called them over. The king says, if any one of you swim across the lake to the other side with the alligators everywhere, you can have my daughter's hand in marriage and all of my riches. So the king says, who wants to go first? white man I go first I go first I ain't scared of no alligators I was raised in the alligators so he jumped in the water he side stroking he swimming he just gone you see his little head get halfway to the to the um pond through the lake he just gone the Mexican guy me go, me go, me go, me swim, me, me swim faster than him. He said he swims, he, he swim very slow. That's why he, he get him get ate up. Me swim fast. Me want to be with you, daughter. Me want all the riches that you offer. Me go, me go. Mexican jumped in that water. <laughs> that Mexican is swimming. Listen, he thought that if he go under the water, he got a better chance to survive the alligators. So we thought, hmm, okay, that might be a good idea. So we waiting, we waiting, we waiting, we waiting. <laughs> alligators that ate that Mexican ass. Oh, God forgive me for cussing. <laughs> That's the hardest part about being a comedian. It's hard to cuss and be saved. So, all of a sudden, the king, he looks around. He say, well, the white man, he done got ate by the alligators. He say, anybody else, the Mexican, he's gone. We only got one man left. Anybody else want to volunteer? By that time, the king heard a big splash in the water. All he seen was that black man, he was stroking. He was bike stroking. He was dog paddling. Listen, he was treading water. He's swimming all to the side. Each side, he's swimming. He bike stroking, bike stroking when he get tired. He made it all the way to the other side of that lake, y'all. The king got on his horses and brought the daughter all the way over there. He said, oh, my God. Oh, my God, you made it. You made it. Oh, I cannot believe. What did you do? How did you? What? The king was just so bazzled. He, he just couldn't figure it out. So I was trying to say baffled. So the king says, tell me, tell me, tell me. What, what, what can I give you? You can have my daughter. You can have all my riches. You can have my land. Just tell me. What, what did you do? How did you get across there? That black man was breathing so hard, y'all. <laughs> he said, King, I got a lot of respect for you. And Lord knows I like to marry your daughter. But the only thing I want from you on this day is the motherfucker that pushed me in that water. <laughs> God forgive me for cussing. <laughs> that nigga said he went out there swim because he won't no no queen, no princess. <laughs> he said he was out there swimming. Y'all, I'm half asleep. That's why the joke is kind of dry. But trust me, but I have all my energy and my mind is right. Boy, I can do that joke good standing up. But look. That dang old man say, I want that motherfucker who pushed me in that water.
<laughs> that one gonna go down like that. Mm, last one, y'all. I'm gonna get up out of here. See if I can eat it in four minutes. No talking. Mm. Mm. I'm trying to hear you up, y'all. I know my husband ready to come in that door. Mmm. Trying to hear you up. Mmm. Taco didn't stand a chance. I'm going straight to bed. All gone. <laughs> Yo. I already don't hardly eat. I said I better scrape up all my lettuce and tomatoes and cheese. Oh, wow. This pescatarian diet. I've been on it now two months. I'm proud of myself. But, man, I eat crab legs maybe twice a week, shrimp twice a week. When I get tired of them two, my only other go-to is salmon. I haven't had any salmon at all this year. But I did research that you got to eat the wild-caught salmon if you're going to eat salmon. But, y'all, y'all pray for my brother. Pray that he be okay. And I'll give y'all an update on how he doing. Because right now his phone is going straight to voicemail and my nerves are shipwrecked. You hear me? It's only uh, three brothers and I'm the only girl. So you already know it. My mama, she already passed on and left us back here. So I'm like a mama to my brothers, man. So I really need something. A miracle. A miracle, Lord. And I just couldn't take it. I'm praying to God he be okay. Y'all, everybody who know a word of prayer, and I'm to my show enough know a word of prayer, I want you to pray for, pray hard for my brother tonight. Call on his name. His name is Raymond. 
call on his name, call on the name of Jesus and ask him to heal his body from the top of his head to the soles of his feet in Jesus name. Y'all, y'all be safe, stay prayed up and just know that no matter what weapon come your way, you got to stand on the word of God. Y'all, I got to preach just a little bit because I feel it coming in my spirit. Hallelujah. Listen, when you're standing on the word of God, you're going to hear the little devil in your ear. You're going to have friends over here trying to tell you which way you should go and what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And let me tell you something. Stand on the word of God because in the end, that's all we're going to have, the word of God. Let me move my plate out of the way for a minute because when I feel that spirit coming on me, hallelujah, I have to go on and let it out. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. So many times we get caught up, our minds it just be all over the place. We don't we don't know which way we want to go with our minds. And then when we go link up with people that God ain't told us to link up with, now we start doing things that God is not pleased with. And I'm going to tell you something. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not worried about my brother. I'm just concerned about my brother because one thing I know about God that I serve, God is going to be there with him every step of the way. So when I say sin of a prayer for my brother, I'm not saying that we don't have faith that he won't be all right. What I'm saying is the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name and touching and agreeing anything, their God will be in the midst also. So what I'm telling you is as you go along your journey and you keep striving to be the best you can be, but all these stumbling blocks keep getting in the way. I want you to keep your faith in God. Don't give up. Just keep pressing towards the mark of the high calling. Look to the hills. All your help come from the hills. All your people and your friends and family down here, all they can do is give you material things and clothes and, and talk about you and, 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 and all these things that don't matter. But when you are dead and gone, where your soul going to go? That's what I'm talking about. Where your soul going to go? All these things that we cherish here on this earth. When we die, where is this stuff going to go? It's going to be here for somebody to fight over. And if your family ain't got enough sense, the the, the estate, will, to the people will be assigned us the courthouse. They'll assign, assign uh, an, an executor to be over your estate. Listen, all this stuff shall pass away. I'm telling y'all, oh my Lord, listen, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of the things that you desire shall be added up unto you, but you got to seek his kingdom first. Stand firm on the word of God. Stand firm. Don't keep wavering. Every time you waver, you're missing your blessing from God. God started saying, here go your blessing over here, but no, you want to run over here. God said, if you keep going straight, I, I got a door open, but no, you want to turn around and get distracted and go back the other way. You got to learn to listen to God and stand on his word. That's why so many times in my life as a child growing up, I was raised in the church. I knew which way to go, but I decided I want to live my own way. I wanted to serve God when I wanted to serve him. I wanted to be in the midst of the church whenever I was forced to go. Uh, even sometimes I would wake up and go and still didn't pay attention in church. Let me tell you something. Now is not the time for any of us who know the word of God, done been in the word of God for many years to keep wavering our faith on God. Because one thing about it, God would do us like he did Jonah. He will have us swallowed up in the belly of a fish. And I'm not talking about the natural born belly of the fish. He'll have us bound in so many things that's going on in our lives. We'll feel like we, there's no escape. He said, I'm going to hold you here until you do what I say. Until you obey me. Until you walk according to my will. I will not open the door for you. I would not send somebody to bless you. That job that you hate being on, I'm going to keep you there until you learn how to appreciate that job. Because when I give you the job that you desire, you'll know how to treat it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I'm fixing to get off here because I know my husband ready to come in here and eat his food. But when I start talking about God, 
Let me tell you something. I don't care what storm may come. I get discouraged sometimes because I'm human, but I don't care what storm come. No devil in hell will steal my joy. I put that on everything I love. I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. One thing about it, whatever I rebuke on earth and bind on earth, God will bind it in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth, God will loose it in heaven. I lose healing over my brother. I lose peace over this home. I lose peace in my children's life. I release peace abundance and fullness of joy over all of my friends and my family and my husband. Listen, the devil will no longer take president over any of my family's lives. He may as well go back to the pits of hell where he come from. I'm going to continue to read my word of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to apply that word to my life. And if I'm stumbling over these words, you have to forgive me because let me tell you something. When God's speaking and you speaking, it's like you got to move out the way and let God say what he got to say. With that being said, I just want to pray real quick for you and your household. Father God, in the name of Jesus, whoever's watching this video, you know their needs, God. I don't know their needs. Father God, I'm praying and asking that you just supply all their needs according to your riches and your glory. Some may need a healing, God. Some may need encouragement. Some may need renewing of their minds. Some people may need financial blessings, Lord. Whatever it is that they need, Lord, I pray that you rain down your manna from heaven and let it pour into their homes. Father God, keep them safe from the snares of the enemy. The tricks that the enemy bring up against them shall not prosper. No weapon that prosper form shall be able to prosper. I bound it right now in the name of Jesus. God, you will reign and protect your people. You will send your angels all around and about your people, God. Father God, let them know that no matter what trial come their way, no matter what the doctor report says, it's your will, Lord, and not thy own. No weapon shall form and prosper. It will form. The Bible clearly tells us the weapon will form, but it will not prosper. So I'm praying, Father God, that as we close out this, this meal that I just ate, God, let it be enough money in your storehouse to provide for your people. Father God, I pray that you continue to lean and to let me not lean into my own way, God, but lean closer to you. And Father God, I'm trusting you for a miracle on my own, Lord, that I know you're going to do for me. And I know you're going to do it for my husband and my children. Father God, I know that you said all things will work together for the good of those who trust in the Lord. And Father God, we are trusting you. We are believing in you and we standing on your word. In your son, Jesus' sweet and precious name, I pray. Amen. I pray that all y'all stay blessed. Hallelujah.